Um, so first, just to introduce ourselves a little bit. So I'm Lori Lesh, and I'm the president of Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Worcester, you see it written. Say it with me. Worcester. Worcester. <laughs> yes, really, we say it Westa. We say it Westa in, uh, in the Northeast. WPI in Central Massachusetts, uh, been there about two and a half years, uh, and it's a fantastic STEM institution, which we'll get a chance to tell you a little more about this morning. Just background on me, um, I'm a space geek. That's kind of my, my background in history. I've spent a lot of time here on the space coast of Florida. I used to work for NASA and everything from sort of climate change and, and astronom uh, astronomical research to the future human space flight program. So I kind of have a space science background and my own personal science is I study rocks on Mars with rovers and things like that. Pretty cool. Jim. Yeah, I don't have the space geek story to share, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, good morning and uh, thank you to Keen for having us here to speak this morning. It's a, such a great pleasure to be here. Um, I've gotten involved with Keen fairly recently. Am I like really loud? <laughs> I've gotten involved with Keen, thank you, uh, fairly recently uh, over the last couple of years. And, and really what I want to talk about and what Lori wants to talk about is the journey that we went through at WPI as we started thinking about uh, the future of the university, entrepreneurship, what that means, and I know we're not here to talk about startups, but I'm going to for a couple of minutes because that helps inform uh, our perspective and kind of where we came from, um, and uh, sort of how that unfolded to where we are today. So I'm a, uh, an alum of WPI. I graduated in 1986 with a degree in mechanical engineering, and I was that kid who came out of WPI and I said, I don't want to get a job. I want to start a company. Doesn't I don't want to get a job. Fun? The thing a college president really doesn't. So I went, to the career, <laughs> I went to the Career Development Center and I talked to my advisor. And the general consensus of opinion was, well, Jim, you are insane. And I thought, well, that just can't be right. So um, I was told I should go and kind of shine up my resume and get a nice suit and get dressed up in a tie and go for the interviews. And I didn't do it. I didn't take a single interview, and I just decided instead that I would actually go start a company. So I did it. Uh, it didn't work. Uh, not a big surprise there. Um, but I went on in my career, uh, after my graduate degree, to work in a number of technology startup and entrepreneurial environments. And so my career is just marked by kind of startups and high growth technology companies, and that's where I've spent the last almost 30 years uh, working in business. And so, so this really kind of informs my perspective. This was um, really much kind of baked into how I thought about uh, how I might be able to later in life contribute something back to WPI. Uh, so probably five or six years ago now, uh, I came back to WPI, um, not yet as a trustee, but as somebody who wanted to come back and contribute and get involved. And I had this entrepreneurial point of view, and I thought, my goodness, we do something like a thousand projects a year at WPI. And they range across the spectrum in terms of the impact they can have and the technical problems that they solve. And it just seemed so obvious to me, why can't we take more of those projects and start companies, right? We should be able to do this. And so I got engaged at WPI, and I started working with the, the dean of the, the business school. And we put a number of programs in place and trying to create support for those students who maybe were a little bit like I was when I was there, who wanted to go out and start a company, right? And so that was really the perspective that I had at that point. Um, and it was just about that time at WPI that we decided to hire a new president. Right, and that's actually where I first met Jim, because he was on the search committee three years ago right now. Uh, I was going through the interview process for the presidency of WPI, and, and I remember this because I remember the first time I really talked to Jim was in the interview, and I said, you know, you guys do all these projects, it, because WPI is a project-based institution, if you don't know us that well, and I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but I said, so you do how many projects a year? And someone said, oh, 1,000. We do 1,000 projects a year. So what happens to these things afterwards? And how, how do you know whether they're doing and accomplishing and impacting the world in the way that you want? And he, I remember you were like, yes, yeah. <laughs> in the interview. So that was how we first Pick uh, got acquainted. Yeah, she's the one. <laughs> so that might be why I'm standing here today. Uh, I don't no, know. No, no, no. 
Uh, I was a new trustee at that point, and I somehow finagled my way onto the Presidential Search Committee. It was the only thing I wanted to do. Um, and uh, I guess if I do say so myself, I think we did a really good job. Um, Remains to be seen by the end <laughs> so, of this talk. So, so, uh, so Lori started uh, at WPI, and uh, not too long into your, into your time, yeah, very uh, early. she called me. Uh, sort of thinking about that time, and she called another trustee uh, as well, and we went and met with her in her office, and she said, okay, guys, so we talked about this entrepreneurship stuff in the interview, uh, and what, what should we do about it? So uh, I thought it was a brilliant move, actually. I was the interviewer saying, so, Lori, what are you going to do about entrepreneurship? And then she just sort of turned around and said, well, what do you guys want to do about entrepreneurship? And brilliant management technique. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and she really charged us to go off and think about the future of entrepreneurship at WPI and what could we do that was somehow distinctive in the landscape of university entrepreneurship programs and distinctively WPI. And we all kind of at our core believed and still believe that it has a lot to do with the sort of very well entrenched uh, project-based learning environment and that is how we could create kind of a, a distinctive program at WPI. Now, back to my perspective, right? I'm still thinking about startups, entrepreneurship, building commercial ventures, because that's what I do. And so we started down this path. And as I mentioned earlier, we had put a number of programs in place to sort of help people who were thinking entrepreneurially uh, and helping them really in the sort of traditional sense of entrepreneurship and how might you start a company and how do you think about that. And so when Lori charged um, Mike Aspinwall, the other trustee, and myself to go off and think about this, we decided that maybe our perspectives were a little too narrow and that maybe we should do what good entrepreneurs do and go out and talk to the market, right, the interested parties. And so we went and we spent a, quite a bit of time and we spoke with faculty at WPI. We looked at other entrepreneurship programs at other universities. We spoke to students at WPI. We spoke to over 100 students about this. Uh, we spoke with students outside of WPI. Uh, we talked to the administration at WPI. And we started to get a sense of something maybe a little bit different than at least what was my perspective on entrepreneurship. And in fact, we started to, as we learned more about the way the community was thinking about it, uh, we started to learn that maybe even the word entrepreneurship wasn't the right word. That maybe even the word entrepreneurship in some people's minds actually has a relatively negative connotation because it kind of speaks to um, creating corporate value focusing on you know, personal enrichment and those kinds of ideas. And uh, in fact, one of our faculty members uh, went to one of the early discussions about entrepreneurship. Uh, and when this person came out of the session, the, the feedback on the session was, that whole discussion just turned my stomach. And it was a really interesting perspective for me, right? Because remember, this is where I grew up. This is what I've done for 30 years. And it started to broaden our framework and started to broaden our point of view. And what we really started to figure out from this exercise was, no, it's not about entrepreneurship. It's about actually creating a mindset in a student that can allow them to pursue their mission, their dreams, their goals in life. And that by creating an entrepreneurial mindset, mindset sure, some students may go off and start a company. That would be wonderful if they chose to do that, and we should help them do that. But other students are going to use those skills in whatever they choose to pursue, and it's going to help them to create a happy, satisfying, successful, and impactful life and set of work products as they go through their careers. So this journey was really interesting for us, and for me in particular, to really kind of broaden my perspective as we learn from the community and we really came to this idea of, no, this thing about entrepreneurship, it's not really entrepreneurship. It's something much bigger and much more impactful. And right about that time, we found a wonderful partner. Another of our faculty members had been working closely with Keen. And these two sort of streams of work came together right around that time. 
And it gave us the tool to actually dis- define what it was we needed to do. And that's when we really deeply embraced the idea of training our students, of educating our students to have an entrepreneurial mindset. And so that was the sort of the beginning of the, the real deep partnership with Keen. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I, I think uh, what I would want to talk about here for a few minutes is what I see as kind of some of the, um, the, for, the, not formula, but some of the key components of success that we've had at WPI. Um, I will, before I get into it, though, I, I like to, I don't frame this from the same perspective as Jim. As you all know, this work it teaches us that we all kind of walk into a room with our own perspectives. Mine is one of a, a STEM professional, someone who's passionate about STEM uh, and its impact on the world. So just a couple of statistics to set up the importance of, the, of making a even, an even greater impact with STEM. So right now about 6% of our nation's professionals are considered STEM professionals, but according to various studies, they create over 50% of the sustained increase in value in our country. So the contribution of STEM professionals to the growth in our economy is enormous from a very small fraction of our workforce. It used to be that something like 40% of the world's scientists and engineers worked right here in the US. That was several decades ago. Today, that number is closer to 15%. And that's cool because it's because a lot of other countries are investing in, in this. They see the value of this small fraction of the workforce that is STEM, but to create value in these, comp- in these countries. And so they're investing. So maybe that's not such a bad thing, and globalization is important. And yet, I worry about the future competitiveness of our country. And that's the reason that I wanted to become the president of a STEM-based institution is I feel in my soul that the future prosperity of our country is linked to our success as professionals in this field of training that next generation of leaders in STEM. One other thing I'm passionate about is diversity in STEM. And I think one of the best ways that we can actually expand the STEM pipeline is to uh, diversify it. So again, one statistic there, which is today, 43% of K-12 students are African American, Native American, or Latino in uh, descent. Only, I think, 13% of engineering degrees are given to students from those backgrounds. So again, one of the most important ways that we can actually address this opportunity ahead of us is to diversify the STEM workforce. So how do we do that? How do we think differently about the way that students engage with STEM? And so this is really what drew me to WPI, is that WPI already was a place that thought differently about how we engage students in STEM. And it's through the project-based approach to learning. 40 years ago, the faculty at WPI, with their great wisdom, threw out a very rigid and rote engineering-based curriculum and entirely threw it out and replaced it with uh, a new curriculum based on projects. And so our students do projects in every year of their work. Every single student at WPI must do multiple projects to graduate. That's actually the main graduation requirement at WPI. And today's incarnation of this project program actually takes them out in the world to do their projects. So they're real world-based projects. We have project centers where students and faculty together go to work in real communities with real people to solve real problems from China to Costa Rica, from Namibia to New Zealand, from Wall Street to Worcester, Massachusetts. Our students also work in our home community. They have amazing experiences of um, working in the real world. And yet, we ask ourselves how we can do better, how we can do more. And I think the, the opportunity that the conversation that Jim and the i and sort of the innovation and entrepreneurship team started and we joined together with Keen was to ask ourselves how can we actually make an even greater impact with this work. And so one of the keys to success for me is that we kind of had this backbone in place, if you will, of programs at scale across our university that every student partakes in that is designed to give a, a high impact educational experience to those students. And so On our campus, we are actually used to talking about things that scale across the curriculum. We are used to engaging in non-traditional ways of thinking about curriculum. We're used to having faculty members get excited about bringing in new ideas. And so I think we were kind of ready for this new conversation about increasing our level of impact based on a strong foundation. 
So that's one, we had a strong foundation. The second piece, I think, is um, top down, bottom up, I'll call it. And we can debate who's on the top and who's on the bottom. I don't, I don't actually like that phrase, but <laughs> let's say it takes the range of uh, folks in your institution to make these kind of initiatives successful. So Jim is a trustee. He's like one of my 30 bosses. President, we have deans in this room. We have faculty in this room. A lot of deans and a lot of faculty, actually, in this room. We, all across our um, institution, are talking about how we can leverage this opportunity to be successful. I am a big believer in the fact that, you know, being a president is amazing, but it's not an all-powerful position, it turns out, in a university. <laughs> people want to do other things than what I want to do. So the best way for me as a president to be successful is to find those faculty who want to do something amazing and partner with them. And if you think about these ideas, they started with a team of sort of trustees and faculty together coming up with an, an idea and a plan. And, and that's really the key, bringing the leadership together with faculty who have to carry this stuff out. I can have all the great ideas in the world, they're not gonna stick. And so I just wanna give a shout out to Glenn Goddett and Curtis Abel. Glenn, who was the Keen Professor of the Year last year, we're so proud of him, um, for really bringing this to life on our campus. And now I'm proud to say, and I think it's only our second year of working on this, we have over 50 faculty that have been engaged, almost 50 classes that have been impacted by our Keen work, and over 2,000 students touched. So we couldn't be more proud of that work. The partnership, a great partner, is the third uh, key to success, I believe. And in Keene, we have found that partner. We came up with this sort of concept of a more impactful approach to thinking about entrepreneurship independent of Keene. We were thinking about this already. And you know what it's like when you kind of are, are off on your own and you have an idea and you find that great partner who can help you advance it. I believe that this, to us, was really the key to taking it to the next level. And for us, what does that look like? This concept that actually came out of this, they wrote a report, they interviewed 100 students and they met with all these faculty and they actually brought a report to me and they brought it to me, literally, they brought it to me two weeks before my official inauguration at WPI. And I was sitting there reading the report and it said something like, we, you know, instead of talking about entrepreneurship, we believe that the focus of these efforts should be on impact. That's the right word. And I went, <gasps> I have to rewrite my entire inauguration speech. And I did. She literally ran out of the room. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I ran out of the room. We, I had to rewrite my inauguration speech. And, and it's actually kind of become our word at WPI. Our strategic plan is called Elevate Impact. So this conversation has had an enormous impact <laughs> on us at WPI and we're so grateful for the partnership and I'm really excited to think about where this can go in the future. Back to you, Jim. So here's my new perspective. It is all about impact. It is all about educating our students to have an entrepreneurial mindset. Because when I juxtapose this idea with my previous perspective, it dawns on me and on all of us that in fact, if we were wildly successful, with what I wanted to do five years ago at WPI and build this entrepreneurship idea, we might, if we were lucky, impact 8% of our students. I'm making the number up, but a small number. But if we are successful with educating our students to have an entrepreneurial mindset, to apply that to everything they do in life, to pursue their passions, to meet their life goals, we will impact 100% of our students. And isn't that really what it's all about? Absolutely, and, and I'll just close by saying when, when I worked at NASA, I used, to, um, I used to joke that people work at NASA because they can't imagine working anywhere else. <laughs> was it always easy working in the government? But NASA was a pretty cool place to work, but, but not always easy. But people who worked there were just like dogs with a bone. They had to be involved in space exploration. It was what drove them, it was what made them get up in the morning, it's what made them work nights and weekends away from their family to get some crazy spacecraft launch into space, or to make sure the humans we're sending up into space are safe. And so it was just, and for so many of them, 
the motivator for them when they were kids was either Sputnik or Apollo that drew them in, that helped them see a passion. It unlocked and unleashed something in them. A few months ago, I got an email from one of our students. He said, I'm a freshman at WPI and I'm already in love. He said, I'm an intern at SpaceX. Now he's a freshman, he's already an intern at SpaceX. I'm very impressed with this young man, actually. I've now met him in person. Have you guys been following what SpaceX has been doing with flying their first stage back and landing it upright? You're a bunch of geeks, right? You've been following this. They fly their first stage back and they land it on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean? No? If not, like Google SpaceX drone ship and you will get a really cool video of this. The first time, they did it like eight times and it blew up and crashed and was horrible and never worked. The first time it worked, this kid was interning at SpaceX in Los Angeles and he sent me the email that night at midnight. I can't believe I was here to witness this first time that it was successfully landed upright, a first stage of a rocket, on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean. That's the kind of passion that you can unleash in students when you help them find ways to make an impact with their work. And I believe that if we do this well with Keen as our partners, we are going to unleash something. I love the word unleashed here. We're going to unleash things in our students that we cannot even imagine yet. We are gonna unleash capabilities and unleash passion and commitment that we all are very privileged to have the opportunity to help channel for good in these students. So thank you for your work in helping them do that. Let's go unleash the hack out of the STEM workforce in our country, because we're gonna save the future. No pressure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.